Hey, Lab Code agents. We've got a choppy connection today, but we're still going to do this. We've got Street Text with us. And of course, Marcus is our man out there. But we've got Nick with us. Nick, I think your connection is just as bad as mine, buddy. Uh, so we're, we're struggling here, but we also have three guests with us. Stacy, Wendy, and Jennifer, who are going to really showcase what they're doing in this market that's allowing them to succeed. So Marcus, take it away. I'm going to make you host because I think you have the best connection. Okay, make me the host. I think my connection is better now. I switched to my other computer, so this might be better. It looks like everybody's connection is better now. I think we're I coming was, together. There you go. I was dragging everybody down, but nothing else is, that's not unusual. Let's go. <laughs> Am I a host? You've got to tell me when I'm host. You are host, sir. He's Marcus. Here I am. All right. So I have three lovely ladies with me today that are all utilizing street text on the lead generation side. But it's, you know, it's far more than street text here. It's what they're doing on the opposite side of the leads being generated. That's creating connection, especially at the moment. Now more than ever, it's, it's all about how you connect. And, and I think it's, how you adapt, right? It's connecting and adapting and building this, this likable model that I think is really highly influenced by video communication. You know, just like we're all here together from different parts of the world as we're struggling through the internet, it's the same thing on the opposite side. When someone wants to know anything that's real estate involved, it's all about how you make them feel the moment they, they get a, a piece of communication from you. So we always talk about the model of being no like and trust and a lot of people, especially now, need the connection first and foremost if they're at all going forward to, to create a business relationship with you. It needs to start personal and, and, and it definitely is leading with value and is being someone of contribution and giving. Um, but who, who would like to start? I mean, because I could feature any one of you and we can share examples right off the get go on how they are initiating relationship with people. Um, but I think it begins with basically winning friends and influencing people one-on-one and how you make them feel. So um, you guys, feel free to kind of uh, unmute yourself while I, if you're not <laughs> unmuted already and just kind of communicate um, what your experience is when you're going after a relationship you never started before. Jen, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, yeah, I'll start. So basically with street text, obviously, we're working towards technology, but what it comes down to is people really have very limited time and very limited attention span. So with Street Text, we are taking them wanting information about getting a lead and or wanting evaluation rather. So what we're able to do is we connect with them, but they're able to see us through our video evaluations. We're able to do CMAs, connect with them using uh, BombBomb and the Street Text platform, connect with them on video, on Facebook, and make those connections where it's meaningful for them, but it's also on their terms and not invading their space and doing that traditional, let's come over to the house. We're able to do so much just using technology and it's been really powerful. Um, when I joined Street Text, I honestly, I, I was a buyer's agent. I had two listings prior to them and now I am primarily a listing agent. Um, I have done a lot of business in the last seven months with Street Text because people are able to connect on their terms and feel comfortable with me just seeing me face to face over the computer. So it's been great. Yeah, so for anybody that doesn't know, I'm mean, a question from the panelists is what Street Text, right? And so Street Text, you know, at the end of the day is a Facebook lead generation platform. Um, it's, it's actually a solution that is so much more than just generating leads. Um, there's automations behind that, there's integrations, and there's a full coaching solution that's all about not only how you begin to tap into Facebook's algorithm to generate very low cost leads, we're kind of, our bread and butter is our seller funnel for sure. Um, but how you start and initiate a relationship with, with leads that most of the time are top of funnel in the sense that they, they're not ready to buy or sell today. Doesn't mean they're not ready to talk and dialogue with you today, but they're usually not ready to buy or sell today. So it's all about how you initiate the relationship with them and then nurture that relationship. And so it is absolutely there for someone who has a servant's heart, 
because it's not immediate gratification like we all are used to with some solutions like Zillow and truly unrealtor type of scenarios or you know Google. So it's all about tapping into the art of relationship. And you know, some people are obviously naturally better than others. Here are three ladies that I think are tend to to to, to be on this spectrum of naturally gifted at relationships. I feel like most realtors should be, <laughs> but it's not, it's not always the case. Um, or some people are really like, it's hard for them to adapt to the video world. So I can share some great examples of any one of these girls to show you what they're doing. But the, the context is, imagine that most of these leads begin with, um, like, so you just so you know the context of a lead that's coming in, they're clicking on an ad on Facebook that says something along the lines of, if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it? find its value in the current market. So they think in that moment probably that they're getting some sort of automated home value. So how do you take the context of what that person is maybe feeling at that moment? Like, hey, is this, is this bait and switch? Are you supposed to be giving me a value? Is it supposed to be like a Zestimate? What is it? And then that opposite side, when they go to their inbox for that moment, they receive a text message. That's where you need to disrupt that idea and be somebody who's genuine and authentic and, and serving them with great information. Tristan, yeah, that, do you have something you wanted to say to that? Yeah, I just wanted to add um, all, all these three agents here, Jennifer, Wendy, and Stacy, they're going to be showing you how they're generating, they're generating leads and connecting with the leads to then make them clients and then having those clients then transact with them. And some of that is happening during what we're all experiencing right now, which is this whole COVID-19 market, right? So uh, that's the cool part about it. It all started from when Marcus and I were talking and he shared with me a video that one of the agents using Street Text, that's why we brought up Street Text, uh, did, which was the virtual CMA. And my mind was blown when I saw the virtual CMA. I was like, why didn't I think of that? That's so amazingly awesome and easy, but I didn't think of it. And that's what started us down this line, which was, well, let's see who's having success using online leads and Facebook and social media and then video and then connecting with people. So uh, let's take a look at it. For those of you who are wondering what the hell is street text, because I am getting a lot of messages now, just go to streettext.com, check them out. That's what they are. Uh, some of the agents here will touch on what it is. Uh, it's just Facebook ads, but it's a lot deeper than that. So, uh, Marcus, who should we pick on first to see what they're doing right now in their business? Well, you know, Stacy, we'll start with you just because we're talking on, you just kind of highlighted virtual CMAs. Um, and, you know, the idea of a virtual CMA is really more for somebody um, that you're personally reaching out to, obviously, on their home. It's not an automated message. It's a personal message, right? So you're going to spend a little bit more time on that message than you would some sort of automated email that's being generated as soon as someone inputs their lead, right? There's a place for both of them. The automation is there on the scalable level. The personal reach out is there to, to make that person feel like reaching out to them. So to put that into context, what you're about to see is Stacy actually going after somebody um, in, a, in a way where she's pr producing value, but it begins with the experience she's providing and the picture of the home itself um, that she's highlighting in this case. So let me share my screen. Um, and and Stacy also uses a system called HomeBot. So she's gonna put it into that context as well, just so if anybody knows what HomeBot it is, it's kind of a, a system that produces home values as well. And the, the actual customer in this case is requesting um, an updated home value from HomeBot. Okay. I love it. Share my screen here. A couple of people saying they love HomeBot. Yes, HomeBot is. Yeah, HomeBot nice. is, is very, very cool. And it's very price cost effective. I think it's like a dollar a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me play this and let me know if you guys can hear it. 
Can you zoom hey, in? Hey, Matt, Stacey Sebastian over at eXp Realty. I wanted to get that virtual CMA over to you that you had requested um, when you asked me to tune your value on HomeBot. Um, so I went ahead and pulled up your house here um, over on Angora Court and it newer construction back in 2016. I know that most of the homes on that street have already been completed. Um, they do have a couple that they are still doing a little construction on. So you are on a newer cul-de-sac and that being a cul-de-sac is definitely a bonus in my opinion. So you don't have that through traffic. Um, I don't have any photos on the inside, so I can't really see all the upgrades that you have. So like I mentioned in, before that we can do like a, a um, you know, a video, a live video, um, we can do like a FaceTime live. So you can walk me through a house, so I can see all the details. And I think I can position more of an accurate evaluation or I might just land at the same. So the comps on your home are actually pretty good. So here's the HomeBot report that you had received and it landed in at 411 and you went ahead and clicked on that tune value. So here we are doing that virtual CMA. So let's go ahead and start. We have three bedrooms, two and a half baths, um, 1807 square feet built in 2016. You're on the northeast side. So I went ahead and took those details, plugged in the information and it looks like you actually had two sales on your street over in Rabbit Hills on Angora Court. And one sold for $399, uh, another one sold for uh, $499. Um, and then there's a little one that's a little bit further away that sold for 420, pretty comparable, but had one extra bedroom. So I am kind of landing at that 412 number. I feel like you could push a little higher only because your backyard is actually a little bigger than the one across the street. You have a nice level big backyard when I looked at the um, satellite images. So I think that'll really help you. Those are pretty, pretty desirable. Um, and that fully fenced in yard is, is great. So, um, so here's what I did. Um, I just wanted you to see that the Zillow estimate here at 403, I really believe that is on the low side. And then also over here on realtor.com, you can see the values kind of shift all over the place at 415, which I think this is a little high. Um, and then also if you come over here, you'll see some ranges on um, this website at 406, and I do believe that is a little low. So I think at this time, without seeing any video of your property, um, I'm gonna land right here and go ahead and tune your value at 412. And if you have any questions and you want to go ahead and set up that call, just let me know and um, we can do a virtual tour of your home so we can both stay safe. So enjoy your day and I look forward to talking to you. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, it, it, the mic drop. I, I love, love that. Can I tell you why I love that so much? <clears throat> because I'm sh while, while you're probably doing that regularly right now, that is so important, like providing, you know, value to your, to your clients digitally while you're, you know, keeping them informed with the real estate market. Everybody wants to know what's happening in the market now during this pandemic, right? That is such an in-depth look at, into what is going on locally and you're delivering the value through video. And Tristan and I have been talking about this almost every day in lab coats, like start pivoting if you're not doing that already. That's, what did that take you, 10 minutes? Like if you carved out 10 minutes and sent like 10 of those every day, can you imagine what your pipeline's gonna look like in the next three months when we're out of this stuff? It's gonna be huge. I love it. It's all about those people that are shifting now. And this is why we're doing this obviously. Um, so that, that the first time I saw that, uh, that was like, oh my gosh, everyone needs to be doing this. And some people are asking, well, where, where do I get these leads? Well, I mean, the leads, you can just post it up on, on Facebook, right? Or you can, like I said, you can go through street text or you can do it through command. Like some people are saying, well, what about command? I'm like, well, you could do it on command too, but um, it's easier through street text too. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful thing what you guys have. Now, some people are saying, well, what is HomeBot too? HomeBot is a separate company than street text. And HomeBot goes super deep into the pricing of a home and it, it breaks down how much you owe and what your payments would look like. It's, it's very different than what you've seen out there. And a lot of it is AI. And that's why we love using HomeBot. It's nothing like you've ever seen out there. And the, the fact that you can combine it with things like street text, it makes it a lot easier for us. Now, um, Marcus, I'm going to go back to you just because you have control of this. I, I wanted to see where you wanted to go after this. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd love to highlight an example from Jen. I'd love to highlight an example from Wendy. I think it's important to realize 
there's two parts like and you're right facebook you can do facebook leads anywhere at the end of the day this is for anybody who's kind of looking to see home values but it's no different than you were going for buyers it's no different from any type of client the idea is connection right so dumbing it down as simple as possible is you're leading with value and you're using video communication not only to like in this example it's important to realize that screen recording is kind of becoming an essential skill to have because you're just you're a voiceover talking about it. it's not like you could be the highlighting yourself on the film there there's a there's an aspect for that but the screen recording allows you to actually have multiple tabs open in the case of what stacy is doing and, and what wendy and jennifer do really well is you can move from what zillow says from what realtor says from what redfin says just so you can see that the internet's best guess is not what they want and it and it positions you to have a conversation or homebot right it's, there's so many factors to consider, especially in now in today's market with so much uncertainty. Um, what is what is accurate for them, and and things they can do to add value into their home. So just, those are just different yeah. tools, right? But video yeah. is kind of the main way. But there's free 99 tools that you can use too. Like it doesn't have to be Bomb Bomb. It could be Loom. It could be Dub. It could be a, a, a number of anything. I always think about the experience you're providing that person. And more importantly, it's not just the experience. Are you tracking it, right? Do you know if it's being opened? Do you know if it's being watched? Do you know if there's any links within that email that are being clicked on? You need to have all those measures in place as well, right? And so the example that I'll kind of move into is what Jennifer has in terms of the automated email, which leads her to naturally the, the, the conversation. Because if you begin with the automated email, that's the scalable part. It's still you talking to that person one-to-one. -one but it's, it can be done in such a way, or if you have it driving from a Facebook lead ad or a funnel, now all of a sudden you could be sleeping and, and these few people are getting to know you with high value. Guys, I just wanted to say really quick, uh, the outline of how this works, because people are a little lost as to, well, what, what, what are all these tools you guys are throwing out? So it's easy. Let me kind of create a flow chart in your mind here. And the leads start off, uh, they're created through street text. They use Facebook. As people engage with that, then they come through to you. Uh, the AI that street text has created goes back and forth with them. And at the same time, then you're sending them their value for their home, either through bomb bomb, like Stacy showed, right? Or, or who was it that showed it, Marcus? I don't want to name the wrong people. I'm sorry. That was Stacy that we just okay. shared. I did do it right. I didn't screw that up. Good. Uh, so, like Stacy's CMA that was virtual, she used Bomb Bomb to do that. And at the same time, an auto email was going out through Bomb Bomb that I'm sure we'll get to, so you guys can see that as well. And then you can use Loom to record as well. So there are some. There are a lot of tools in here that are being used. And people are wondering how each of them work into this whole thing. Forget about the tools for now. Look at what people are doing to connect with people on a deeper way. Part one of this was with Stacy, like Nick said, that was amazing. The virtual tour and taking people through that process. Now let's take it a little deeper and show how people can connect even more. Marcus? 100%. So I'll share an example here of Jen. Now, Jen has, you know, she, again, she's using a tool called BombBomb to do this. Um, and her automated email, I don't, I don't know this is completely automated. Your video might be automated, but I think you obviously went a little bit above and beyond here. Um, and so you're going to see kind of how she sets this up and she gives kind of guesstimates as well. But let me play the video just so you can see what I mean here. Um, and we'll go from there. And I'm just going to open this up and play it for you guys. Below, you're going to find your home valuation. This valuation shows you the internet's best guess of what your house is worth. Underneath, you're going to see that I gave a range for my initial findings on what your house could be worth in today's market. What I'd like you to do is, after you are finished reviewing, if you could email me, let me know a good time for a 10 to 15 minute complimentary walkthrough of your home. At this visit, not only will I tour your property and see any unique features, additions, upgrades you may have done, but I will show you firsthand the comps in your area, the market activity, and I will leave you with an exact plan for listing your home and the exact price I think your home will sell for. 
If you're not quite ready for that, maybe you have three to six months before you're selling, please email and let me know that you want a market update and that will be sent to you every month. And what that will do is it will show you the market activity in your area. It'll show you the recent comps, sales, anything going on in your specific location. So you can see whether or not your market value for your property is going up or going down or staying the same. If you could check your Facebook message request folder, I probably sent you a message. I really like to get an opportunity to get to know everyone I'm working with. And that way, not only will you get to learn a little bit more about myself, but you will also be able to ask me questions through email, on the phone, or through Facebook. I look forward to hearing from you and we'll talk real soon. Yeah, right? I love it, dude. Like. You know, the thing I love about that is because there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much, there's only so much that a text or an email or a voicemail drop can, uh, can connect with somebody, right? Like, listen, those things do work over time, right? But I do think that a video, seeing that person's face, even if they don't reply right away, when you start sending the texts and the emails, they've already seen your face and looked at you in the eye. And I feel like that follow-up process is gonna be a lot shorter because they basically feel like they've met you right up, right up front before any of that other stuff. Yeah, I mean, and look what Jen did too on that case of like check your message request folder. I think there's something huge to be said about an automated message that's already setting the tone for the friend request. It's already setting the tone for the Facebook message because after all, where is everybody spending the most time these days? On social media, on Facebook, on Instagram. Where would you like to continue that conversation? Of course, on Messenger, because it can drive your videos, it can drive your audio, it can drive your PDFs and what you're sending. It can allow you to create groups, right? And so forth. And that's where they're gonna be spending an hour or two. They're not sitting in their inbox. That's where it begins, but they're gonna naturally be on social media. And that's where you're gonna build that knowable, likable trust model. Um, mm -hmm. and they're going to see you more than just a realtor. They're going to see your family. They're going to see what you value, what you love, you know, your, your posts about food and all that good stuff. So I think it's important to set the tone with your automated meshes to let them know you're trying to take it to Facebook Messenger. It makes that conversation start a lot easier. Hey, hey also, Marcus. I might want to add that, like, there's, there's some cool stats out there. Um, agents that Tristan and I are talking to regularly, and one in particular up in Canada He's very analytical and he's been tracking his contact rates and his conversation rates when it comes to Facebook leads. His contact rate over the last couple of weeks has gone up 37% and his conversation duration, like the amount of time he's on the phone with people has grown by 16%. He's that analytical. So he's getting in touch with more people and he's having longer conversations because everyone's home. So take advantage of that with these videos. Hey, I wanted just to chime in, if I could, uh, what Marcus was talking about. I really like what Stacy did. So the, the point is, if you have the opportunity to record a video and start from their house, people are obviously interested in their house. So if you could do a live screen share, that's the best. But sometimes, you know, you'll get a request because someone's sitting in front of their computer at midnight. And I might be up working, but I'm not going to be on the camera because I'm in my pajamas. So that's when I send that video that you guys just saw. That's just something where I can actually do the CMA. I can go through MLS, pull the data, what Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com think their house is worth, and do that and tailor make it, but not have to remake the video. So that's just kind of like a worst case scenario. I really if you're able to do what Stacy did and do it live, that's always the best. But I agree with what Marcus said. You have to connect with these people on Facebook too, because honestly, that's how I met Marcus. I was like, oh my gosh, his wife is so cute. His kids are so cute. He must be a nice guy. Okay, I'll trust him. I'm glad I did. But people like to see that you're kind of normal. Not, but my Facebook looks pretty normal. So, I mean, it's a win-win. That's true. You don't want to post a bunch of conspiracy theories. Sorry, you guys. I'm just joking. Um, Wendy, let's show Wendy because Wendy hasn't gotten attention yet. And you can see just kind of bouncing off Jennifer and talking about the importance of screen recording. Here's Wendy out of Las Vegas crushing it as well. And you know what, Wendy, you kind of can talk about this a little bit. Like, remember how like it, unnatural it was in the beginning and, you're, and we just kind of said, you know, let's just do it. It's like, it, 
for most people, right. it's, I mean, it's yeah, all these make it look so easy and it's, it's definitely not easy at first, but, um, the cool thing with street text is that, you know, it already has an automated funnel. You know, you could probably do business just from their funnel, but they tell you, you know, Hey, this is what someone's doing and it really works. You want to do an initial video. As soon as they click the link, they get this video from me stating, you know, Hey, thank you for your inquiry about trying to find the value of your home and I'm on it. And then I just say, I'm going to send you a friend request, but my Facebook link is below. So, you know, click below to get to know me, stuff like that. So like that automatically goes out, which is amazing. And then um, they also get a text too. So both of those go out. And then that gives me a couple days to, um, you know, get all of my video CMAs done because they are pouring in. I mean, this shit really works. <laughs> <laughs> they are coming in and because people want to know the value for so many different reasons. So like people want to know their home value because they want to refinance or maybe because they want to sell or maybe because they're freaking out because they don't have a job and they may need to sell. Um, or I get the ones that are already listed, but it's not the owner. So maybe it's the buyer wanting to buy it, wanting to know if it's priced right. So there's so many different reasons why people are clicking on this link um, that we can customize our video CMA. Like if it is a buyer, you know, I tell them I, the same thing as I do for a seller and say, you know, hey, it's actually priced pretty good. And if you want to go look at it, let me know. So, you know, you can kind of um, customize and personalize it for everyone, which is cool. And then their funnel goes on and on and on. So after that, there's another video that says, hey, did you get this? And hey, did you get HomeBot? Here's how to work it. And stuff like that. So sorry, I'll just keep talking. Probably no, that's uh, good. Crazy. I want to address a quick question. Is this being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. We put that link to our YouTube page on the chat box. I'll put it again. Do yourself a favor. Please subscribe to it because it does take us a few days to edit this and then upload it to YouTube. There's a link to this and then- uh, Probably a little bit longer because of your internet issues, Tristan. Thank you, Mark. You know what, it might take <laughs> six days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I just wanna say something really quick, um, just because you know we're all getting leads from all these different directions and I think it's really important to look at the bigger picture because you can get as many leads as you want, but if you're not doing that follow-up and you're not personalizing it and you're not attracting your people while you're doing it because you're not gonna attract everybody. So I think it's really important to incorporate social media as much as possible, um, friend the people. It's not stalking, they clicked on your link they asked for the information, they contacted you first. So I think it's really important to also say that, you know, find them on Instagram, find them on Facebook, friend them, get them in your loop. Um, I have Facebook uh, groups as well here in Bend, Oregon, and I toss everybody in my Facebook group once they accept me as a friend. And then right now, especially with what's going on in the market, you know, people are really feeding on negativity right now. So what's happening in my Facebook groups is, is I'm doing a lot of, hey, let's be nice. I'm deleting this person. I'm saying, hey, you guys, can we please stay neutral? Um, I'm not pushing my beliefs on the group. I'm letting people have their opinions, but I'm saying, hey, let's, let's at least be nice. So what's happening is, is a lot of people are loving how I'm managing this group. So that's not real estate related, but in the middle of it, I'm creating all these people that are raving fans because of what I'm doing in this group. So it's outside of that, but these people that I'm getting from street text, I'm throwing into my group. So I'm getting to know them on a different level. So then they trust me and they see that, you know, I'm trying to be a good person. I'm a part of the community. I'm giving back um, Zoom, like I'm doing all these Zoom meetings, talking about what's happening in Bend, what's happening with our market. These people that are part of street text that I have friended, they're seeing my videos. I'm boosting them in the community. So there's so much more than just a lead. It's what you do with that lead. And I think that's really important. So I just wanted to touch on that. So I love that you said that because so many times Tristan and I hear, oh, the leads suck, the leads suck, the leads suck. And then, you know, we see statistics all the time saying that 51% of leads don't even get re replied to, or, you know, it takes 48 hours for an agent to, you know, get back to somebody. And, you know, if you're not reaching out to every single person that request information from you as if they need you, right? Like if you're not going to them from a place of help and assistance and contribution, like, look, this person clicked on my ad. They gave me their information. 
I'm doing my customer service to get back to them in a timely manner because I have to assume that every single person wants to talk to me and that's how I need to approach it. And if they're rude to you, they're rude to you, so what? But as long as you come from that place, um, you know that you're doing everything right. 100%. Someone was just asking, you know, I have 5,000 friends, like how am I supposed to do this? Well, I always challenge everybody who has 5,000 friends with the exception of Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> um, with like, can you track the influence of these people? And you know, I, I too at once had 4,000 friends and I was like, well, what's the point? Like if I don't know and have interaction and relationship with these people, how do I know what kind of influence I'm having in their lives or the type of influence they're having in my life? So I made an effort to intentionally reach out to every single one of the people. And you know, some people are going to ghost you and they're never meant to be your friend. But at that same time, it allows you to develop the friends list aspect of it. And you can start looking at your Facebook as a CRM and start acknowledging that this is really where your bread and butter is. This is your business model. This is where everything is. So personally, I would look at all 5,000 and purge it down to the level of influence you actually have in these people's lives. And that's where you truly see if those people are meant to be in your life or not. Um, so that's another conversation. Let me showcase Wendy's examples of a, of a screen recording um, so people can kind of get an idea of, you know, multiple ideas and, and methods of, of providing value. So here's Wendy out of Las Vegas. Hi, Dwayne. I'm Wendy with LBC Homes Realty. I received a request online to find the value of your home at 7804 Blue Eagle Way. Um, I pulled it up on Zillow and love it. It's gorgeous. Love that pool. Uh, they're saying it's worth about uh, $394,073. Uh, Redfin is saying it's worth $398,514. Uh, and Realtor.com is saying it's only worth $375. So as you can tell, online values are kind of all over the place. So we like to go uh, right into the MLS and look at similar square footage, also with the pool, two-story and three-car garage in your area. And they're coming in between 320 and 415. That's a pretty big gap. So in order to get a true value of your home, I would actually need to see your home. Below this video is a link to my calendar. You can click on it, pick the best day and time that works for you for me to either personally come by and view your home, or we could do it via video. And then I can answer any questions you have as well. So thanks so much for reaching out. And we'll talk soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Nice and short and sweet. And I like to try to keep it short because on Bomb Bomb it says play this 60-second video or play this five-minute video. And if they see five minutes, they're not going to want to look at it. <laughs> so short, sweet, to the point. And I'm getting a ton of good feedback from the last one, especially holding up the phone because you know not everybody wants you to come into their home but they still need to know the value and need to show you the upgrades and stuff like that so it's been working yeah. good I, I love the three different styles too this way people can relate to either wendy or stacy or jennifer because we're all a little different right we all feel more comfortable doing it one way over another so I love that. Great job, all three of you on, on your approach and actually doing it because, you know, that's the hardest part. Yes, it is. It is really hard because, you know, you got to, even though we're kind of stuck at home sometimes, you got to like put makeup on sale and <laughs> you try to look decent on the video. Yeah. But, and there's a lot of them pouring in. So I just have it time blocked. You know, um, I did hire someone to do all my CMAs and send them to me so that I can just do the videos because that's oh, how many are yeah. coming in, um, which, which is working out good. So it's all about a system, you know, and you got to make sure that your videos go out before the next thing goes out in the funnel. Otherwise that's going to go out and your video never get, went out. And then people are going to be like, what video? You never sent me anything. So. Yeah. yeah a, couple, a couple of questions here, guys. Yeah. Thank you for the details, Wendy, because somebody was asking about that. Uh, questions here. One, what calendar link? I you, you can book me. You can book me. Is that Y O U or U as in the uh, Y O U? Name? Y O U. Yeah. You, you can and, book me. and you can do several different calendar links, and um, 
you know, like my seller ones are for an hour, buyer, buyer showings are for two hours, you know what I mean? And then you can kind of customize each one. And then I have, I, which I just actually added, um, you know, to set up the appointment in person or um, via video. So they have two options now. Um, so that when I get the request, I know if they want me to, you know, call them or do a via video or go to their house. So hey, it's cool. I got a, 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 a the, the easiest solution that I found work. What was that big link? Someone just, <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, gosh, uh, the, the best solution I what found. What is that thing? I know it's just some, some spam. Don't click on it. Oh, that's Don't a really good um, I would use, and there's so many ways to try this, okay, but from what I've found, the, one of the easiest integrations to use, especially if you're using video to try to communicate and create a, a, a meeting, would be Calendly. And the reason why I love Calendly, because Calendly also integrates with Zoom. So if you have a Calendly link that you provide with somebody and you have multiple options depending on what you're trying to get that person to accomplish, and you set aside that time in your calendar, what it'll do is it'll automatically assign them a Zoom link to connect with you. And so it's an awesome opportunity when you're describing where you wanna communicate and how you wanna meet, click on this link below. We'll have a, a virtual meeting one-on-one. -on -one. It'll automatically send them the Zoom link and then immediately it connects in your calendar and it books in your Google calendar, whatever that is. And you can wake up the following day and literally have appointments set, Zoom meetings scheduled just coming off that, you know, that automated email or a personal email. So it's pretty strong. All right. I love that. Can I add a couple of things here? Yeah. Um, one is people want to know how the ad looks, Marcus. So if you can pull that one up so people can start looking at that. And the other one, while you're pulling it up, and Jennifer, Wendy, Stacy, any of you can answer this one. This is to either of you. And that's, from the leads that you're getting that you're sending this information to virtually, how many of these are calling you back and emailing you or saying, hey, yeah, we're interested, or three months from now, six months from now, now, right? Um, I'd like more recent examples so that people can see that this works. Well, I can tell you this. So um, I gauge it by in the last seven months, I've had nine listings with street text. So to me, that's a good win. And I am not running, you know, multiple ads. So that's one thing. Number two, it depends on how well you track it. So through BombBomb, I'm able to track how many people are opening the emails and looking at the videos. And when they don't, what I do is I simply resend it, repackage it, put a new subject name on the email, because if they haven't looked at it, it's trash, they're just overlooking. So I resend until they open it. Um, it depends on how much you're willing to be aggressive that way. Um, I'm also friending them on Facebook. So to be honest, I would say out of the people who you know are putting in leads, to me, at least more than 50% are interacting with it by either opening it, responding. I'm having some kind of engagement. So to me, it's been very fruitful. But to have exact numbers, maybe Stacy and Wendy are better at tracking that. Go ahead, Stacy. Um, honestly, I'm so involved with social media and Facebook groups and Instagram and Facebook business and all that kind of stuff. I'm more focused on the social media aspect of just staying in front of people. Um, I do have my funnels that I put together and built myself through KV Corp, which is also integrated with street text and they kind of go back and forth between each other. Um, and I worked really hard on that. But I think the most important thing for me is, is just being a real person for these people. So I do highlight my lender. I do highlight, you know, my social media and all this kind of stuff and I do highlight where I exist and what I do for my listings and what that looks like and I do videos for all that but I think the biggest part for me is is just really Facebook and just staying in front of people and showing my personal life because people like to follow things and especially if they're looking to move to an area they want to be a part of something so for mine it's Sunny and Bend it's my daughter's name is Sunny and everybody wants to move to Bend and you know I we just it's our life so we just want to, I just want to attract people because of who I am. Um, I don't want to necessarily not be who I am. I stay away from politics. So I get a lot of my business from Facebook. So, uh, and, and a lot of that is from street text of people that I've friended. So I get that business. So in my world, my ROI is very low. Um, I can track all of my business to Facebook. 
through street text or on my own. So it's all Facebook for me. So that's where I put all of my attention. So I, 75% of my business is Facebook. I would also like to say that, um, you know, we get asked a lot, um, you know, from, from agents, whether or not, uh, you know, systems like this work, right? So I find that to be a very interesting question because they all work, right? They all do what they're supposed to do. They all generate the leads, right? That's all they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to convert for you. That's your job. So asking if they work or, or questions along those lines, that's really, that's up to you whether they work or whether they convert, whether they convert. Ask them if they convert as opposed to work. Yes, they work. They, it's a funnel, it's, you set it up, you put it out there into the world, the leads come in, the inquiries come in. Whether they convert, that's not Street Tech's job, that's your job. So um, we get a lot of limiting beliefs around that. And what agents have to understand is if you don't know what to say, if you don't have the scripts, if you don't have the systems, none of it's going to convert, but they're all going to work in that they'll generate the leads. That's right. just what I wanted to say. Right. The, lead, the leads definitely do come in um, and the money's in the follow-up, obviously. Um, but the thing is, is that you're just in for a lot of, lead generating sites it's all about nurture and you know so when you can connect with people and actually make relationships with people which no number you know you never know how much that's going to build into but i mean yeah i've gotten a couple listings i've i sold one which is like nine thousand dollars and that's way more than what i paid for street text you know what i mean so obviously i'm already doing well and then we got a neighbor that they're going to be listing and i have about six appointments uh, that I've been to that are working on stuff, you know, and then I have about 25 people that I'm talking to that want to list eventually, you know, is there any, it, and now it's all about this pandemic and should I list now? And I mean, it's just having conversations and being, you know, that person of what we all do best. Is the world. Yeah. It's the gift that keeps on giving, but a lot of people are not willing to invest the time into developing their process. They're so, um, convinced that these leads should be ready to buy or sell today. Um, well, that's, yeah. not, that's not for the- Instant gratification. <laughs> yeah. What you, have to understand is, what you have to understand is with Facebook, for the most part, and not all the time, for the most part, these people are top of the funnel, right? Which yeah. means um, they're just kind of starting to think about, thinking about buying or selling, right? Like, as opposed to a Zillow or Realtor.com lead that you're going to pay three, four, five hundred dollars for for one of them, um, you know you're going to pay pennies on the dollar for these. So, for instance, I ran an ad recently where I spent twenty five bucks and we qualified three of them, and one of them's ready to buy in the next two months, and they're pre approved for four hundred thousand. That's a great freaking return. Doesn't happen all the time, but you also have to make sure they're not spending more than you're than you're going to make. So, you know, for me last year, if I spent $24,000 on Facebook ads and I grossed a hundred thousand, that's a good return for me. So I don't look at Facebook ads as a uh, conversion rate. I look at it as return on investment because I need to generate hundreds of Facebook leads a month, right? As opposed to realtor.com or Zillow, where you need to like convert every single one, right? Um, so it's about return on investment over conversion for me when it comes to Facebook because the price is so good that if you close one, chances are, like in my area, 7,500 bucks, my average commission, if I closed one Facebook lead a month, I would make another $100,000 um, and I would probably only spend you know, 12,000. So that makes sense to me. Hey, Nick, you know, you were talking about how all of them can work. It's all about the follow-up. I gotta be honest, I, I am kind of a street text nerd. Marcus knows that, but I've tried it all from Zillow to Redfin to um, Google ads. The difference is, I mean, not only are they seeing you, so it's already, it starts more personal, but with with street text, you're also getting the support on that private Facebook, just like lab code agents, you know, people have support with you guys. Uh, you can go there and you have the coaching and you have just like this, we showed you guys three videos and people are asking questions. Can I get a script? It's all available for you. Whereas when you're paying for leads and then you're buying everything individually, you're not getting that support. So to me, it's completely different, but you're right. All of them could work, but you really have to have everything in one place to be supported and feel like you can, you know, get the job done really. 
Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, I, I was making like a like a like a general overview of what agents ask when it comes to this type of stuff, right? And it's like, well, does it work? Yeah, it works. It brings you the leads, and it has, and there's the systems there. But you know, the systems don't convert unless you dive in and you start, you know, humanizing it and and understanding the cadence and what to say and and so on and so forth. And that's where the mastermind groups, you know, just for just for just for the mastermind, like I know for, for a fact that Marcus, like every day or whatever it is, goes on and does a, a live and coaches everybody. And, you know, you can't, you can't put a dollar amount on that. You know, that's priceless stuff. I'll show you guys the ads because everybody wants to know about ads and what it looks like and what Jennifer's running, what Stacy's running. It's not rocket science, but the idea is most people don't know how to tap into the algorithm of Facebook or when to actually let an ad continue versus turning it off. So we've developed a really strong idea around the split tests. We have a really good understanding to, to find out how to gamify Facebook so that you can literally spend less than $9 or kind of have this 24 hour cap of when you know if this ad is gonna be worth continuing with or turning off. Uh, most people don't teach that or coach that. Marcus, um, so as, as you're telling that, these are not lead ads. So there's a difference no. between Facebook lead ads and ads that Marcus is going to show you. So big difference, guys. I just wanted to point that out. So here's Jen running in a, a general Facebook style templated ad that says, if someone were to buy your current home, would you sell it? Find its value in the current market. Now, when they click through, basically it, this is kind of beginning to be the experience they're having. So from the smartphone, from the computer, right? You're, you're usually seeing this done on the smartphone. So it's kind of smart to know that when they click through, it's a very congruent experience, which is why we have something like seven out of 10 clicks become a submission. That's unheard of in the industry. Now, if you look at the way Jen's running this, you can see that right now, Facebook is pulling in all the data for her. So you can see what her last seven days is doing versus her lifetime. And you can see that this ad over the, almost the last $500 has crushed it. I mean, she's basically getting a $2.42 address and about a $6 email. Um, and, and we break that down more. And she's running a, a 20 mile radius, right? So it's all about analyzing the stats and then also acknowledging that with all those automations are sending out, emails are sending out with the video that we, we highlighted, text messages are sending out from AI. So needless to say, there's a solution behind this and the solution is only as good as developing the process. And the process itself is, be, is, is the moment they get in their inbox or they go to get their text message, how does it make them feel, right? Are they gonna connect with you? And so these, these ladies have showed you that it's all about the connection. And that's why if you, if you think about the connection as being the, the, the element, the lead generation will never be a hard thing. We, we feel like we've kind of mastered that in a sense, but where most people struggle is once the lead is generated, how do they start the conversation and how do they continue the conversation into a relationship that leads to that transaction? And that in itself is an art um, and that most people need a little bit of training and coaching in. And you gotta pick up the phone, you guys. <laughs> Don't forget. Oh, you by the way, you this took the for, <laughs> for Tristan and I, like when we start, I started really generating leads on Facebook like four years ago. And believe me, like it took me a long time to figure out how to talk to these people, right? Because I was so used to right now leads. And when you start to realize, first, it can be very frustrating. I'm not ready to buy it for 17 years, right? It can be very frustrating. Um, but when you start approaching it in a way like, you know, hey, you know, I put, I put some information on Facebook about home values and, you know, you clicked on it, um, I realized you might be, uh, somewhat curious right now, which is which I completely understand, but I would really like to keep you up to date on what the market's doing. And so, like a couple things, very casual, right? Here's two pieces of, here's two nuggets for everyone. Be very casual about it, right? What did you do? You put some information on Facebook about home values, right? You you you're talking to them like you made a post and they engaged in it, right? Second. Get in front of the objection before they give it to you. I realize you might not be looking to sell or buy at this time, which is, I completely understand that. I just would really like to keep you updated on the market. So you're being really casual and you're getting in front of an objection before they give it to you. And you're just basically saying what happened. 
you clicked on my ad that I put on Facebook about home values. So non-pressurizing and it almost works every time. So just go at it with that, uh, that perspective and angle and you're gonna get a lot less of a resistance. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I guess and this is important too to realize that your automations don't do the job for you. Um, make sure that you're tracking everything. So the moment that lead comes in, you wanna know the open rate. You also wanna make sure when you send something that you can track that it's open, that it's being watched and that there's, if there's any links within that email that they're being clicked on. And if it's not being opened, you want to send it from an, another way, maybe change up the subject line, perhaps move from Outlook or Google to BombBomb. You're, you're going, you have to be relentless in your pursuit of initiating the dialogue and, and conversation. You know, And even no, I, Julia Hurley, I, I used to work with, I would say no is, it just means not yet. Like learning how to overcome objections as well. Um, and just being super friendly. Like a lot of people don't realize you need to actually spend time investing in creating the relationship. And some people have more walls up than others. You wanna know what the best um, objection handler is to the most common objection? No thanks, I'm just looking. That's awesome. What are you looking for? I would love to help you uh, in your browsing to send you the right types of houses for you to look at, right? Like, yeah. it's just like when you go into a department store. Do you need help? No. Five minutes later, actually, where do you guys have the, so just ask them. Awesome. I love looking. What are you looking for specifically? I mean, don't or, use or, it as a, if someone says they're just looking, it doesn't mean they're not buying. They're looking for the right house. Or so. also the biggest objection everybody gets with street Texas. I was just curious. Cool. What are you curious about? Me too. I love being curious. <laughs> Really? I think it's, yeah, I think it's important. <laughs> I think it's important too that um, because I do notice that people unsubscribe from certain things. So, um, so what I do is, is I when I get a seller, I'll drip their neighborhood. So that's part of one of my processes, right? It's like, okay, here's their house, here's their neighborhood. I want to keep them up to speed on what's happening in their neighborhood. The other thing that I do is I Facebook friend them. I have follow-ups for friending them as well. Did they accept my friend request? I'm gonna resend it until they accept my friend request. Um, and then also, uh, you know, HomeBot. So once they get HomeBot, I've had people say, hey, I just thought you were another annoying realtor, but I really like HomeBot a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. So maybe they unsubscribe from Street Text or they unsubscribe from KD Core where my drips are happening, but somewhere along the line, they liked something that I gave them. So travel down multiple avenues to stay in front of them because you never know which one somebody's going to appreciate. Um, and also the cool thing, if you have a website that's attached to a CRM that is like a smart system, um, once I put those sellers into my website, um, I'm able to see when they look at what I send them. So now I can track them not only on street text, but I can, track, uh, I can track them on KD Core. So if they start to look at properties, it's going to be like, hey, how's that house that just came up in your neighborhood? What do you think of that price? So there's lots of different avenues to interact with them. So try to get as many as you, as you can so that if they do unsubscribe to all of them, then at least they're, they're my Facebook friend and I got them in the group too, right? <laughs> so eventually you want to win them over. And Marcus is right. You never stop. And Nick is right. You never stop. So when they say, hey, I'm not interested, thanks, but like, no problem. I'll check back with you in six months and see how you're, how you're doing. Because they asked for a reason. So when I was doing real estate in Maui, I'm in Bend, Oregon now, but I was doing real estate in Maui, all of my customers were on the island. They were all on the mainland. So all of my business was virtual. So what I'm doing here now in Bend, Oregon with what's going on is actually pretty normal for what I'm used to doing. I actually had to take a step back and kind of go old school in my opinion. <laughs> it's like people want to go meet me at the coffee shop. They want to sit down and talk to me. They want to feel that personal connection. And I wasn't used to that. So I really had to pedal backwards and be like, okay, this isn't virtual real estate anymore. This is on the ground real estate. I have to show up to their signings. I didn't have to do that before. So um, the cool thing about Maui real estate is, is I really took all those tools and I'm able to relate it to now. But like Jennifer said, um, Zillow, you know, all that money that I spent into, into Zillow, I'm only spending, you know, under 200 bucks a, uh, a month for street text and then my ads. That's the cheapest I have ever spent for any leads. I don't pay for any other leads. My ROI is very low. So that street text, you know, people have fears of running those Facebook ads. 
Um, I had my fears. They did not work for me. I boosted them. I wasted a lot of money. And the cool thing is, is they, they run those ads and they've tested them. They, they're running it for you. All you do is choose which ad is performing and their, their choice that they have. And you go ahead and, and trigger that ad. So it's super easy. I type a couple words, I add a photo and I just launch it. It's, it's so easy. I don't have to sit there and target everything anymore. I love how so, you went to school, Stacey. Good job. <laughs> what's that? You're old school, but it's new school to all of us. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> right. Everybody's all excited about the virtual aspect. And I'm like, ah, I'm back in my zone. Like this is, you know, I have a YouTube channel on Maui that has 5,000 views on some of these condo tours because I did flip flop tours of all these complexes. And I just looked at it the other day and I'm like, oh my gosh, Montage has 5,000 views. That's insane. <laughs> and I can't do that here because they're neighborhoods and they're huge. So I was trying to ride my bike and I'm like, that's not working. I want my condo complexes back because I could just walk around, hold my camera, get the whole condo tour. And then people would buy based on my YouTube video of what the complex looked like. This well, week. that's the new world we're in and that's not going to yeah. end after this is all over. Guys, I want to answer one question it keeps on coming up in the chat and some of you may see it or not because it's exposed to all panelists or just attendees and so forth so that's that so people are saying well is street text like is street text like this or like that or like this and let me tell you street text isn't like anything you've seen before nick and i have seen everything on there everything that is out there street text is nothing like it because they do something different uh, it's not like Realtor.com. It's not like Zillow. It's not like Command. It's not like KV Core. It's not like Chime. It's not like Ylopo. It's like nothing you've seen. So you can't compare it. Nothing out there does what it does. You can guarantee that because we see everything. So just if you want to test it out, go to StreetText.com. They have a seven-day free trial. And the best thing is, once you do, Marcus will contact you through Facebook Messenger. He'll send you a funny video, uh, right, Marcus? Or Logan, or Troy, or Ira. Mm -hmm. You'll have some excellent coaches to choose from. So just know that it's completely different. And I'm not saying that uh, just to say that. It, it really is different. It just is. There's nothing like it. It's, and get this, guys. We have a community just like LCA. It's Street Text Insider. And we have a mastermind every Wednesday. So this is where we actually rally, just like we're doing here. We highlight Wendy, Stacy, Jennifer, and all the other giants that are crushing it on the conversion side because it's all about the process and the conversion and integrating with video technology. We all know that. Like, this is the time and age. Like, we all inevitably have to now put our video processes in place because that's the only way to, to connect with people during these times. Marcus, so, how do people get a hold of you? Um, Facebook message me. You don't have to friend me. You can still use Messenger. I have Messenger. So just Facebook message me, ask me any questions you have. Um, and, you know, if we connect, perhaps we will become friends. <laughs> I like how you added that at the end. Perhaps we <laughs> will. Perhaps. <laughs> I use my Facebook as a CRM. So it's just not, I don't just like, hey, everybody friend me. <laughs> All right. Marcus Willard. It's W-I-L-L-A-R-D. Yeah, Marcus so Willard. That's correct. Uh, if you, I can't change your name because I made you host. So if you want to just add that to your name on, on Street Text. Hey, guys, I got to jump off, but this was awesome. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Love you. Bye. Hi, Nick. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Then, so it's W-I-L-L-A-R-D. I just typed it into the chat box. There will be a recording of this, guys. It will be on our YouTube channel for Lab Code Agents, and I will put the link on there right now. So join, subscribe. Marcus just typed in his name in the chat box. Stacy, Wendy, Jennifer, you three are awesome. That was really cool. Stacy, that was still awesome the second time. I loved it. And I need to see more of all three of you. So uh, let's, let's do this again. And then just show more of what they're doing, Marcus, because we didn't get into the bomb bomb emails that go out, right? those videos, which I think are really important, right? And we didn't get into the follow-up. Like I wanna get into the actual follow-up of what happens step-by-step. Step. How many days do you follow up? What happens after? We didn't get into any yet. So I'd like to see all of that the next round, guys. Tristan, don't ghost us. For real, let's do it then. Yes. Um, Marcus, all about the funnel. Marcus, keep me, keep me accountable. 
Yeah, go ahead. Who about the funnel? Who was Wendy? What were you saying? I said, yeah, it's all about the funnel. Let's do it. Trust me, guys. It's not this long nine month, like you know, drip email campaign. It's usually the first automation and then the personal follow up. It's not a, you know, an automated sequence that's going to begin the relationship with people. It's you personally reaching out and being active in that pursuit of that relationship and utilizing Facebook Messenger and Instagram and, you know, just being relentless in your pursuit of relationship and coming from value and contribution and service, you know, that's the only way to do it. And for anybody that ghosts you, then they're not meant to work with you anyways. That's it. Yeah. Just let them stay on the drip. Eventually they come to life if they're supposed to. Like Stacy, I like that you friend request everybody because that's really cool. Although I'm maxed out at 5,000, so I have to delete some. But the cool thing is, is what Marcus taught me is you can friend request these people. And even if they don't become your friend, you still add them to the seller Facebook friend list. And then you can post just to those people. So, I mean, that's the CRM. Tristan, I well, think- Well, you can, you can remove them from your uh, personal page once they like your business page, because then you, they'll get all of your posts off your business page. Oh, there you go. And Tristan, I, I think we actually need to go back into helping people understand Facebook being a CRM. And for people that have these ideas around 5,000, like that's a, that's a big objection that I need to help people like understand. You shouldn't have 5,000 friends unless you can track every single relationship and, and, and really like, you know, I'll, I'll help you guys hack that part. Cause if you look at birthdays, every time you see a birthday, you can see all those people's birthdays and ask yourself, do I know this person? Do we have a relationship? Just click over their name and it'll show you your message history. And if you don't ask yourself, well, what is the influence that I have in this person's life where they have in mine? And then you can start there. That's an easy way to start purging. Street Just tech. Genius, right there. I started that in November. Every day I look at birthdays, I put everybody in a group, I tell everybody happy birthday, I delete the ones I don't want, which is helping. And by November, everybody is gonna be in a group. Talking about that, Wendy, one quick thing. When you birthday, when you say happy birthday, you mm -hmm. can actually put your Facebook business page and then delete the link. But when you press enter, it'll come through on their page and it'll have your business with the page and the picture. And all they have to do is click on it. And because there's no link visible, Facebook doesn't spam it. So they click on it and then they, they like your page. Wow. All right. Can okay. you repeat that for a few people? Because I don't, I think some people aren't paying attention because I'm messaging. Yeah. So when you have a Facebook birthday and you want to say happy birthday, you put happy birthday with a few emojis. People love emojis. It's been proven. Ask Marcus. And then you put your Facebook business page link. It'll populate the picture, you know, of your, your banner. Then you delete the link. You press enter. But the link will still be there if they click on the picture. So. Yes. Very it cool. Looks beautiful. You won't have that long, all of that www, the domain name. It just won't be that long. So. Great, great. Hack. That is a really good idea. Can you do that with a picture though? Because I normally post a picture that has my logo on it, but it's a funny birthday picture. And then you do the link below. Mm -hmm. Yay. All right. Marcus, anything you want to add at the end here? No, I mean, for anybody that's just, you know, just try it. Like at the end of the day, don't be scared. It, it is, it does take work, but you have a, a community that rallies around one another. There's so much great training and resources um, and just be open to learn. I think at the end of the day, if you're a student who's open to learn, you're going to get the resources available. You're going to time block for that process and you're going to have a community that will rally around you just like LCA um, to make sure you, you're successful, right? That's mm -hmm. all it takes is to have the right mentality and be open to learn. I love that. Guys, this is recorded. Again, I keep getting the question. This is recorded. Uh, this is being recorded. We're going to send it out on Wednesday on the recap. So not this Wednesday, next Wednesday. And we're going to send a recap of everything we did this week. This is going to be one of the highlighted webinars. So wait for that as well. If you don't want to wait for that, go to our YouTube page, Lab Code Agents. Yeah, YouTube.com forward slash Lab Code Agents. It'll be uploaded there in about three days. Uh, if my internet still sucks, then it might be six days. But... Who knows? Because now it's working. Well, we'll have to do it again. We'll schedule the next one. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Thanks, guys. Guys. Thanks, everybody, for being on. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.